Hi, welcome to the Brick Filmers Guild podcast hosted by us, the Four Monkeys. On this podcast, we had the extreme pleasure of chatting with Chris Celiasis and Ian Holmquist of Mini Life TV. Their amazing brick film series, Mini Life TV, has 75 episodes completed so far. The two are in their mid 20s and they live in Southern California. Their YouTube channel, which was started in 2011, has around 5,000 subscribers and over 700,000 views. Their first brick film on the Mini Life TV channel was released in March of 2012. This podcast is sponsored by Brick Stuff. Brick Stuff makes the smallest commercially available lights for Lego models, and their wires are the thinnest available. You can snap Lego bricks, plates, and tiles directly on top of the lights and wires. You can hide them in anything you build, and there's no electronics experience needed. Check out Brick Stuff Lights at www.brickstuff.com and see how to take your builds and brick films to the next level. We recently created a Patreon account. This is to help support our podcast and inspire more frequent episodes. We'd love it if you would support us there, but either way, our podcast will always be available for free. So, without further ado, here's our conversation with Chris and Ian. Well, hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. How are you guys doing? Hey, doing great. great. Thank you. Great. Um, if you don't mind, if each of you will, uh, since we have two of you here, which is cool, um, just take a moment to introduce yourself and tell us a little about yourself, and then we'll start hitting you with some questions. Okay. Uh, awesome. I'm Chris, and this is... Uh, I'm Ian. Hi. And, Hi. Uh, <laughs> and welcome to Mini Life TV. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank get you very much. Get ready to have some for... fun. And get things done. Get things done. And... Oh wait, no, this is your guys' podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. <laughs> well, I, was, I was getting into it. <laughs> you get a bunch more subscriptions uh, after this. Was hope. Yeah, hard uh, to believe. You guys that you should don't have, have about a thousand times as many as you have. Um, I, I even tried to watch all all the videos of yours that I've uh, missed this morning, um, and I, I got through about five hours of them, and that was about, and that was only about two thirds. So <laughs> I'm I'm up to about uh, forty nine. I've seen a few after that because I've been watching them um, for the last couple of years, but uh, I watched them all on the uh, the Roku this morning up to about forty seven or eight. And I still have another 20-some to go, I believe. Yeah. That's certainly a daunting task. I think, I think the plan is just to make keep making more and more until people just, they can't ignore us, you know? It's, <laughs> it's like, it, it just becomes a burden. Like, okay, fine, we'll finally watch this. No, keep making them so that, so that nobody can ever catch up. It's like, okay, I think I can catch up like in a couple of days. And then they just have to keep going. It's like a game, you know? Yeah, episode a thousand. <laughs> and he also watched the commercials too, just so that you know that the ads. So hopefully, give you guys some extra money there. Well, I skipped one. It was a two-minute <laughs> ad for a thirty-second video. Well, I don't blame you for that. It's okay. I skipped my own ads. But I don't think I don't think you're supposed to watch, or you're not supposed to click your own ads. No, well, I didn't click on any ads. I just watched them. I watched everything yeah. on the Roku, and they just popped up, and I didn't bother to skip because, you know, when when a brick film comes up, all of us should watch the ads or at least go to the restroom when the ads are on. <laughs> yeah, help out help out the fellow brick filmers. Watch the ads and uh, help, help like everybody when, out. I like when it's Lego ads, but I, we get some weird ones sometimes, like, like you know, those like sad animal commercials like donate oh, yeah. now for a, for a dog in need <laughs> and now enjoy your programs yeah, yeah. like no now I gotta pause it and get some tissues but yeah <laughs> you, you know I think one of Forrest the uh, Forrest Target ad might have shown up once not on not this morning but on in the past watching Brick Films um, but I rarely see the Lego ads pop up oh are you talking about the Lego Batman yes one? and that was probably one of the better ads I've ever seen um, with stop motion from Lego. He, he knocked that out of the park. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was cool. I to talk to him about that a little bit. Yeah. Since you know him <laughs> in person. Yeah, now yeah, I'm you in guys the, the Lego to, circle. Lucky. <laughs> you guys get to hang out and go to parties and go to Paul's house, and we, we feel so left out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've hung out with Paul and, and Forrest and Sean and, and now Zach and Sias and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just had a housewarming sort of thing. Uh, uh, yeah, we all just moved. 
I actually got invited to. That was pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah. um, how did you guys meet? Uh, let's see. We met on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were at... We were at a high school game that uh, our high school was going against their rivals, you know, and uh, Ian was in the band, I was in the crowd, and then, you know, typical rival stuff broke out, a battle to, a battle to the death broke out, and uh, we met on the battlefield. We were about to kill the same guy. Ah. And I noticed we were using the same weapon, so uh, it was just serendipity. That's awesome. <laughs> so we'll Part of that is true. We, <laughs> we met at high school. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. senior year of high school, we had a class together, and the death battle uh, was exaggerated a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Chris took some artistic liberties. Yeah, uh, but we just uh, we met in our class and had some banter and got along great. Um, and then uh, after high school, uh, Chris hit me up about hit, hanging out a couple times, and yeah, we uh, couldn't resist. We ended up going to the same college, uh, which is kind of funny. I thought. I mean, it was, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like, you know, I met Ian in high school, and then I didn't really, I didn't expect to see him again in college. Even even when I knew we were going to the same college, because uh, he was studying music, and I wasn't. And I was like, "There's no way we're gonna ever, you know, have any classes together, and we're never gonna like." I don't think I don't know if I'll ever run into him. And then the first day after my first class. I ran. I bumped into Ian going to my next class, and he was at like, "Hey, uh, give me a call sometime, and we'll grab lunch." That's yeah, cool. And, and that, so I did. And that was before you started Mini Life TV, or had you? Yeah. Already? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was going to college for about a year, and uh, and I was just thinking about like what I wanted to do, and uh, I know I always really wanted to. Because there's a lot of great, I knew there was always like a lot of great Lego, um, Lego videos on YouTube, but uh, one of the things is, um, you know, with every Rick filmer, it's always like one video and then a couple of months later, another new video. So I always thought it'd be cool if there could be a Lego show that people come ba- can come back to every week and, and see something new with like reoccurring characters. So I was starting to get the idea for that. Uh, around the same time that I was hanging out with Ian, and then when I decided to do Mini Life TV, I was just like, you know, hey, you wanna, you wanna do this with me? And, he, and I said <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and cool, so it cool. began. And that yeah. was around 2011. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you've been about six years of it. And that was the first time you had done stop motion. Mm. No. No. Uh, I've done stop motion since like since I was a kid. Uh, do you guys know that old uh, Lego Studios set? Oh right, okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. So you got that, and you you dabbled with Lego stop motion for quite a few years. Um, do do you have any of that uh, stop motion still around, or did you have a YouTube channel for that? I I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, it's kind of like embarrassing. I don't. I don't like showcase it or anything. Okay. Because it's like my earlier stuff. But yeah, I did. I did like a couple Star Wars things. Uh, I did a Monty Python inspired thing, and uh, yeah, and actually the Monty Python thing that was like the first thing I had Ian voice on when I'm in high school. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, that's what he brought up to me, and I thought it was really cool that he put everything together and he had these uh awesome ideas to draw from just as far as uh you know writing a script and putting it all together so i was really intrigued by that and i thought it was cool that he asked me to be a part of it yeah because our high school it always had a um it had a film what's film festival or film contest like every year so uh so around my sophomore year i think it was i started entering and I won the first time with a, a Lego Batman video I did, That's and cool. that had no dialogue. It was just like all sound effects and music. And then the second time, I decided to try something with voices, which I, I hadn't really done before. And I did that with the Monty Python thing, and that one again. Wow. And then, yeah, and then my senior year, they didn't have the contest anymore. Aww. That's just not right. <laughs> yeah, you were robbed. Politics, high school, switching up. <laughs> and but uh, 
but yeah, that's that's how like I started to really start to like it. And like about every year, every like summer, I would always take the time to make a Lego uh, video just for fun. And it would usually take me like about a week to make. So that's why when I decided to do Mini Life TV, I was like, well, before it always took me about a week to make something. So I think I can make a weekly show. Little and that won't take up too much of your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. That was that was back when uh, that was back when our shows were like five or seven minutes long, at the longest. They got a they got a little longer and more complex. It seems like, uh, especially with some of the later uh, ones, you you you've added, I believe, uh, mouth movement in season four. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, uh, yeah, even just the the animation. It seemed like the, I mean, there was always good animation from season one on, but season four on, it seemed like it just took a big jump in in quality. <laughs> Um, a lot of out of so- arm socket movement and um, in the yeah, I, long I got that stuff the the sock the out of the joints thing. I got that from uh, David Pickett by watching his stuff nightly news at nine. Yeah, nice. and and he's kind of uh, you've been in, doing stuff with uh, <laughs> David uh, since I get maybe season one. I, I believe there was we, yeah uh, he was some of it the in first. there. He was the first person to uh, collaborate with us, and uh, he was gracious enough to uh, let us use one of his characters, that, and he voiced it. And yeah, that was he was like our earliest uh, Lego animator supporter. <laughs> he he's got a good eye, and he he can find people. So uh, yeah, kudos it's nice to him. having one of those. Thomas uh, Blob Studios was ours. <laughs> That's nice memory. Remember? Uh, he's a uh, Scottish. Um, he did a, some, I guess, some Lobster Santa is. versus or Santa with um, uh, Star Wars uh, Vader, and he's done a few other things like that. But he's he's he puts out maybe a video once a year now. But uh, he'll probably get into more, you know, releasing more. Yeah, eventually. we look forward to talking to him in the future because he's just one of our homies. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. I don't know if I've seen him stuff, but I will look it up. You definitely need to look it up. Um, what was it? Uh, there was a Wookiees. There's something about Wookiee. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's 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 really funny. Where I think some Wookiees um, uh, steal the Millennial Falcon. You'll Millennium, probably see Millennium someone who's been go. Oh yeah, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and he he's voiced I think in a few of uh, Forrest's older videos from probably 2008 and nine. Ah, but, um, I see. Q, Q. Um, let's see. And how did you choose Mini Life TV as the name? Uh, you know, it's weird. Uh, I, it was like always the name I had. Like I hadn't, I didn't have like a list of different names. And I had to choose the right, the best one. It's just like the first thing I thought of, and I don't even know where it came from. That, that's why in the first episode, I just had. Uh, I just had like the voice of God tell us what the, <laughs> what the show should be called because because it was pretty like I don't know there was no there was never any question that it wouldn't be called Mini Life TV mm-hmm. that was just a a name that randomly came in my mind and I stuck with it. It was meant to be. Good old Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, where do you typically brick film the animation? Uh, in my room. In your room. With yeah. your cat. <laughs> with my cat yeah she's yeah she's actually i've had her since she was a kitten and she she learned to be respectful of legos like, <laughs> she, like she, she stopped eating them <laughs> <laughs> yeah she only she only messes with them when uh when i don't pay attention to her and then she like she'll walk over to something a lot like a cartoon like she'll just sort of look up walk walk over to something look at me and then if i haven't paid attention to her yet She'll start knocking things over. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that that would be what they would do. They love to knock things over and get hairs all over everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure we eat our our cat hairs daily and she he's upstairs, so <laughs> it seems to well, be I, everywhere. Yeah. Well I get cat hairs probably on me and then that gets on my set. So I'm constantly using a brush or uh, compressed air to try to get dust and uh, animal hairs off the set. Yeah, that's that's a big thing that I uh, I had to deal with in season five because I season five is when I first started using dragon frame and okay. so 
I was able to do a lot more with that and like really open up the focus and everything. And so when things became sharper, I started to notice a lot more like dust and hair and stuff. So I had to up my uh, hygiene game. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you using before um, Dragon Frame? I was just uh, shooting it blind. I was just whatever was in my head. And then uh, I just I would throw it all together on uh, Monkey Jam. Okay. Yeah, that old program. I've used yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so yeah, the first the first four seasons they were all done, uh, just just me and my camera, <laughs> no no program. Wow. And but like Chris could... has a a pretty awesome setup in here in his room. Um, he's got this huge desk right behind us with uh, a bunch of sets on it, a hole in de- the desk which I don't quite understand what it's for, but I'm sure <laughs> a trap door. Oh, uh, yeah. It's to put all the cat hairs down. You just kind of sweep them, and sweep them down the hole. Yeah. What? Well, it's good for, uh, like, I can I can put lights up through it. Like, um, in our second to last episode of season five, um, like, the whole, the, the opening shot with all the, the, the gods um, and their high towers, uh, I was able to shoot, like, lights up through the, the trap doors. I put a, a glass plate over the over the opening and and animated like that and it was a pretty cool effect so and if anybody it's cool when i come over and he's got three or four sets on this desk and you can kind of see him at work constantly it's pretty cool and i do believe you have a uh, behind the scenes that does show your little trap door and and uh some of the effects you've made with him that was a pretty cool behind the scenes um yeah that was my first one <laughs> i'm not really good at that stuff <laughs> You know, one of the things I one of the I, I think it was season one. It was uh, one of the scenes that I really loved is where you got you two, the real you two, were talking to the uh, minifig you two. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I was nervous about talking to myself. I didn't know. <laughs> I remember that, but I remember the first. I, remember I talk the first... to myself all the time. <laughs> I remember in the in that finale uh, where it shows the the real me uh, like collapse on a desk and then Ian comes in and, and like tries to shake me awake. I remember the first time we did that like we had to we were struggling not to laugh because we weren't used to not we weren't used to real acting. <laughs> yeah. Well, your voice acting has has been is wonderful, and I'm assuming you you record your lines before you animate. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't. You've all have you always done that? Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I can't animate if I don't know, uh, you know, what the characters are saying because because the the performance it influence it influences the performance of the minifigs. So I have to know what they what they say. I totally agree, and I've I've kind of switched to that uh, for most things. I sometimes if I don't have the lines in from somebody, I'll do the lines myself, and hopefully it's close enough. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, there's a couple times I've done that. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that definitely stands out about the Mini Life TV um, series is just the voice acting is really awesome. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the one of the characters that I love um, is Archie, the little robot. Yeah, he yeah. Is he's, as, he's adorable. He's as adorable as BB-8 and R2D2. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, he's a. Uh... He actually, Archie, he was created for, so Mini Life, it had like three different incarnations before it turned into what it was. Uh, the, the first thing was, uh, it was going to be this kind of like office type style where like a mockumentary type style where uh, it's like a shaky cam and it's following a Lego minifig around. So uh, that's, that's what the original Mini Life TV was going to be. It was going to be... Uh, what eventually became my minifig, uh, except I had him named Sam for whatever reason, and like he lived in this house uh, on the on the shelf of like a teenager, and there there was like these skeletons living next to him, and like a wizard and a robot and stuff, and so that was my first like idea for mini life, and I was having trouble coming up with ideas for it, so uh, I decided to try to give him a job. And I always thought it'd be cool, like for him to work in space. So then I kind of took that and shifted the whole idea to like a space show, and 
it just became. I remember that. Yeah, it just became. I took away the TV part and I just called it Mini Life because that that was going to be the name of the station, and it it was going to be my character and Ian's character because by this time I had asked Ian if he wanted to do it, <laughs> and so it was going to be us playing ourselves, but we were going to be like um, we were going to be working in like a. It was going to be like The Office meets Star Trek. I was still keeping the mockumentary style, but it was going to be like in space and like a like a space academy. So we'd be dealing with like cargo and stuff, like in the transporter room kind of thing. Right. And there'd be like a captain and there, there was other characters too. And uh, I actually shot the whole, the whole first like episode, like the pilot, and we recorded it and uh, I put it all together. And then I was in the middle of shooting the second um, episode, and <clears throat> it, it's funny because like it was I was shooting the scene where because our characters accidentally got recruited onto the space academy, so I was shooting the scene where they were getting ready to leave um, the planet and go to the station, and like something just didn't feel right to me, and like I was starting to feel really constricted by like what the show was. Because I was looking around and I was seeing uh, all the Legos in my my house, like all the different uh, like the crazy things, like dummies and vampires and robots, and was like, you know, I want to I want to incorporate this kind of stuff into my stuff, but uh, it, it can't uh, the the space show wouldn't couldn't be that quirky. So uh, I went for a bike ride and I did a lot of thinking, and then I came back and I just opened up I just opened up a a, a blank file on Word. And without even thinking, I just was like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write um, and see what comes out. And so the first thing I typed was, "Welcome to Mini Life TV, the show about everything." And then uh, I just continued to write from there. And uh, the whole, the whole first episode uh, was just spontaneously written. And um, the way, the way it is in, on YouTube, that's the way, like it was originally written. Like I didn't edit it or anything. Wow. And okay. so, Did, so yeah, Mini Life TV just kind of came out of spontaneity, and uh, and then we like found it as the seasons went on. Well, obviously okay. that worked out perfectly because it's amazing. Now, did this kind of did were you a Seinfeld fan and did an anti almost Seinfeld thing, or was that not even in the your head there? Because their I, show was about nothing. I think that was part of his pitch when he <laughs> first told me about the show about everything. Uh, he, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we've always been uh, Seinfeld fans. Uh, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't really remember making a big thing about it. It was just kind of a funny idea to me. Like, a show about nothing, so let's just do a show about everything. And it <laughs> and pretty much has everything. Came, came from the previous iteration where he felt more constricted. Um, yeah. Where he wanted to make it a variety show and kind of yeah, uh, have an yeah, I wanted, endless supply of ideas from there. Right. Yeah, I wanted to do something that would just like let us off the hook and like any idea that we had, uh, we could mm-hmm. do. Well, you even have a show within a show uh, with, I guess, uh, Snowball's, um, uh, uh, his, his talk show or that he does. Yeah, that's right. Late yeah. Night Snowball. Yeah. And that, that was actually uh, that was actually Ian's idea. He came up with that. Actually, Ian is kind of responsible for Snowball becoming a main character because I wrote the first episode that he appeared in, but he didn't have any lines. He just popped out of his coffin. I think that was like the third episode. And then Ian wrote an episode. I think it was the, the Splitsies 5000 one. Oh, that was a very first one. <laughs> yeah. And he had the idea to uh, to just like bring about characters that we had in the, the past couple episodes as like our staff, and uh, the idea of uh, just the the vampire that was hanging around after that episode was really funny to me. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, Ian Ian wrote the first like dialogue for Snowball, and it was that I think it was the the sketch where him and Archie are on a, a date. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they have, to, they have to figure out how to uh, how to how split to the dessert. Or, yeah, split dessert. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I watched it this that's morning. Right. That's right. So so yeah so yeah, many fans. You have Ian to thank for Snowball becoming a main character. Thank okay. you, Ian. And and when it comes to writing, um, is this split 
duties or or do you work on the same script together or maybe one does one one does the other or how does that work out uh well i've i've been fortunate to write a few episodes but especially um in more recent seasons where we wanted to have a more um kind of continuous story arc um chris has really taken the helm and just made sure that we have uh more continuity and uh kind of uh, recurring inside jokes and stuff. Uh, like, I I just finished watching Arrested Development, and I see a lot of similarities with that as far as, like, the more you watch the show uh, and, you know, the more invested you get into it, the more you kind of find the humor that is brought back. I totally um, see that. I totally see the connection there. Yeah, I, yeah, I always love to uh, just, like, bring back as much as we can like like with our our most recent finale we had like almost every character we've ever had in the show at the big party yeah that was a that was very cool yeah that, that was a lot was of a fun great episode <laughs> oh yeah the yeah the roof falling in <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. and this the second i saw i heard forrest talking that cracked me up because him playing batman in your stuff was <laughs> it it's just like you know what when i think of lego batman i don't think of uh, what's his name? I think a forest, and perhaps <laughs> have him in there is, uh, and it, it was funny. funny yeah, stuff. yeah, I thought, yeah, I, I like the idea of him coming on as Batman, and then, uh, and then just like <laughs> getting getting fed up, and and then he uh, takes off his Batman cowl and stuff, and then you still don't know who Batman is. <laughs> That's kind of a throwback to I think our first finale from season one, where. Uh, when the real me like is unconscious and Ian says, Chris, wake up. If you don't wake up, you'll never know who Batman is. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of, uh, very, uh, what's with like <laughs> very in jokes sometimes mm-hmm. that like you have to be a really dedicated fan, I guess. To, to yeah. Get. I don't even realize that. One. <laughs> I guess I'm not a big enough mini fan. <laughs> and I, I like the poor guy that uh, keeps losing his job. Um, he's yeah. funny. Oh yeah, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, we we don't even have a name for him. Yeah, he, still, he's just we just call him the annoying guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's he's adorably annoying. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, before before I forget, um, when we were talking about Archie earlier, the whole reason I went on that long tangent of uh, <laughs> of where uh, all the incarnations of Mini Life, uh, Archie, he he was a character I created for the space show, and then. Um, I just liked him so much that even when I abandoned that idea, I had to keep him because he was just he was just too uh, too great. I did some test shots with him, and he was just too fun to animate. So, yeah, and I, I definitely saw – it's funny when you mentioned like BB-8 and R2-D2. I definitely saw the inspiration for R2-D2 when I first saw you know Archie being uh, put together, that sort of brilliance of a character with no expressions and no uh, dialogue with still a lot of personality. And I think uh, Chris has really embraced that uh, as we've gone along and made him just as much a character as, uh, you know, any of our other fan favorites. I totally agree. Um, Let's kind of dive back into some tech talk here. So you're using um, uh, Dragon Frame, I'm assuming, with what, a Canon, what kind of camera? Uh, T3i. T3i. Um, So what are you uh, editing and doing uh, any other post-production? Uh, I use uh, Sony Vegas to edit it together, and <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I when I started doing the the mouth movements, I started using a new program called HitFilm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that has a great tracking software, and uh, that's that's how I track all the all the mouths onto the mouths. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Because yeah, this, uh, some some of that uh, you know uh, chroma keying and the mouth moving stuff is just really spot on. Um, and I'm uh, impressed. I mean, you got a lot, a lot of times you'll have explosions going on behind a minifigure. It seems like you have a lot of masking going on there, which uh, s- seems a tough effort. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know. I've always just. <laughs> I, sometimes I do write myself into like a lot of post production uh, editing, but I, know, I I like to see every every episode as a 
as a new challenge. Every episode has some new thing that I've never done before. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's one of the reasons that I love Mini Life TV is that it keeps me it keeps pushing me to yeah, try challenges. new things. I know for uh, I'm not sure if you're still doing it, but you were doing uh, I think it might have been season five some head replacement for mouth movement. <laughs> yeah, um, that was pretty tough, wasn't it? Or yeah, time consuming. Uh, I had to abandon it, obviously. Um, yeah, I think we did only like five episodes uh, like that. And that's because because uh, after season four, I got kind of fed up with with the uh, the mouth movements. I mean, I mean, tracking the mouths onto the Legos. So I wanted to find a, a different way, a way that I thought would be easier um, and and look better. But um, it just turned out to be way too time consuming for a, a weekly show like we do. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. I, I think I've only seen really two animators do that um as you know like y'all did i guess uh, donald Faison and you um yeah that's, donald Faison. he's the one that i got the idea from oh yeah, yeah he is brilliant yeah i wish he was animating more but i guess uh his acting career and uh uh marriage with a child and whatnot uh keeps him away from it but uh, yeah i hear that'll keep you busy oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Um, I think Donald Faison. I've heard that name. <laughs> yeah, he, he's done some uh, some Lego stuff. Yeah. Wow, he's Lego a Star brilliant Wars brilliant animator. Um, I don't. I think he goes by his YouTube name's named after that now, but it used to be maybe Shun Digga or something like that. Yes, I I was on it. I was rewatching his stuff recently, and now it's just his name. But mm-hmm. but yeah, he's he's to blame for my uh my interest in the the mouth replacement or the head replacement stuff. <laughs> I, I, th- I thought about I even uh, I would I even thought about buying some of those um, heads from uh, I don't remember which company in England sells them um, and I wouldn't mind just doing some tests with it but I think that might be a little too much to try to uh, go for on a regular basis. Yeah, it was. A, I'm glad I tried it because uh, like it was cool. It, it, it was definitely a, a unique look, but uh, you know it's it's just it just takes a lot more time. Mm-hmm. And and minifigs are they're so small that you know you, you can't really unless the faces are printed on you can't be like you know it, it can't be like Robot Chicken where they they have mouths on because it, they're the mouths that like Robot Chicken they're pretty small and they have like big puppets so I can't imagine making something as small for like a, a minifig so I feel like the best way is just to uh, do it in post. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it looks better also. It looks um, more realistic. It, I mean, it, the other has a really cool effect, but I actually do think it looks so realistic doing it the other way. But yeah. You, you do yeah. do a lot of um, a, a head replacement for expressions, though. Um, so that's, yeah, that, that, that definitely one works. Thing, one thing that I like that I actually got to take away from the whole mouth, um, from the head replacement thing is the different expressions and... Uh, I feel like that's a good balance of, you know, uh, replacing heads when it's necessary, but not all the time. Okay. Um, what kind of lighting do you use? Uh, for the past five years, I've just been using uh, desk lamps. Desk lamps with the but, paper in front? Uh, yeah, not always paper. Okay. Sometimes I don't need it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. I have these uh, cool... Um, these cool lights that came with a remote control that it changes the color like from red to green and blue and stuff and and that's been really uh um cool to play with all the different uh, like you know color lightings i like to i like a lot of different colors in in my stuff that's cool 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 do you but i'm definitely going to upgrade for the movie <laughs> oh okay we'll get to that in a little bit so cuz i don't think i've heard about that um <laughs> That, that does sound neat. Um, and you do uh, uh, quite, quite a bit of uh, chroma keying with a, um, a blue or a green background? Yeah, or, only when it's necessary. necessary. I don't like too many green screens because, you know, sometimes sometimes it, it just uh, it cuts away things you don't want it to cut away. And, yeah. and sometimes it just is obviously a green screen, so I like to keep it as real as possible. Mm-hmm. Do you use backdrops? Yeah, I have a... I have a like a big green board that I use, green and blue. 
but backdrops with like scenery scenery on it. Oh, that yeah. Um, for the fourth season, I had a couple backdrops printed out. Um, I have a big one of Mini Life City. That's like a a big city backdrop. I have that in day and nighttime, and then uh, I also have a nice sky with some hills and stuff. And then I also have a sunset one, and I think that's about it. But yeah, those are cool to work with because uh, if you can position them right uh, and light them right, it, it looks pretty good. And you just had those printed off at a little print shop or whatnot, and you designed it on um, like Photoshop or whatnot? Yeah. Okay. Um, those would be good to sell those things. I mean, those, <laughs> those could be very helpful. <laughs> Extra money, no. There you go. Um, what kind of um, audio recording equipment do you use? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, just a big fat microphone looks like. <laughs> I, I don't know the brand. Is it just plug into your computer USB? Yeah. Okay. And do you use a tripod with your camera all the time? Sometimes, never. I have. I have a mini tripod that I used for a couple shots a mini life tripod sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> and but, you, put, uh, you put that on your animation surface on the d the table yeah I, i've only used the tripod a couple times most of the time my camera is just uh it's on the table or it's on it's under some cds if i need to raise it and but, how do you secure that you just use some uh tape or putty tack or yeah, tape and yeah, tape and putty tack. Okay, so that's more similar to what I I do, but I, I know a lot of people will put the tripod on the on the floor. I just yeah, when, when I've talked it. to like Paul and Forrest about it, how I, I like never use a tripod. They were like, "How have you done all this work for five years and never used a tripod?" <laughs> I I rarely pull mine out. Um, I'm mostly do I do like you, so at least there's there's a freak like me, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. well, I think I, I think that that's part of the reason I was able to go so fast um, when we started out. It was just like it was it was really just like a basic me and my camera um, thing, and not like too much setup with equipment. Okay, and do you have any uh, like a macro lens or anything for your camera? Yeah, I have a couple lenses. I could get real nice and deep into them mini phase you can see all their flaws and pimples <laughs> <laughs> cool 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 um well i guess let's talk about this movie um i haven't heard about that yet um yeah. so what's let's going on there okay uh let's see we're making a movie and it's an origin movie it should be awesome that's part of our plan well, and that's about it cool. <laughs> next, next next question no, no. Uh, not too much to, um, uh, do you know how long it would be or, or and when do you think I mean obviously do you have an idea when this would be coming out I know no one uh, likes to say dates because then people are hey why is it not out yeah uh, no I don't have a date yet I'm, uh, I'm aiming for like roughly 90 minutes wow yeah uh, <laughs> I know, that's what everyone says I'm starting to question myself. <laughs> well, I uh, mean, I, I watched five hours, and I'm only two thirds through your uh, your episode. So, I, I, if anybody's going to do it, I, I can see it being you guys. Yeah, it helps it helps that I, that that I'm crazy. <laughs> I think we That's all are. Just tell me. Um, and um. Well, okay. So, um, and that's just an origin story. All right. So we'll move on from there. It sounds like we kind of want to keep it a little bit secret. But exciting, yeah. though, so looking cool, forward cool, to it. Cool, cool, um, Yeah. And I'm looking at your YouTube channel, probably 95, 98% of it is Mini Life TV, but you've done a few other things. I think you did a, a Doctor Who crossover, maybe with Star oh, yeah. Wars? Yeah, I, I just did that on a, on a break once. Uh, it, was, it was like around Christmas, and I just got the Doctor Who set, uh, so, and I really wanted to animate with it, so... I just did that as a little test. Is that something you, you think you might be doing regularly, or are you just mostly dedicated to getting the mini live TV um, videos done? No, my stuff is pretty much all mini life. It's just every so often I like to do 
little things just just for fun. Okay, because I, I remember that, and I, I think it was a Brick Film of the Month that for the Brick Filmers Guild, and I, I, I love that. And, you know, I don't want you to take time away from any live TV, but definitely some of the other things are really cool, too. Yeah, I do. I get ideas for other things, but uh, fortunately, uh, uh, working for Paul, uh, it helps to... Uh, it helps to satisfy any uh, alternate Lego urges I have <laughs> doing his like Lego Ghostbusters and Lego Star Wars. And that's, I've got the next question teed up, and you kind of uh, teed it up yourself, uh, the Lego Ghostbusters with uh, the Digital Wizards, um, Paul Hollingsworth. Um, what was that like? Uh, was it a like, good learning experience? Did you learn any? you know trade any tips with each other where you learn something from him vice versa vice versa nice oh yeah well yeah i've I've been uh i had been working for paul uh, for a while before um the lego ghostbusters thing came up we'd we'd done some other projects for spin master but uh but yeah it's always uh when you work with other, other animators you um you always you know you learn a little bit from each other we wouldn't know. Yeah. Nobody comes here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, I, I just had the opportunity to uh, work with uh, this great guy um, called Kent, and he he worked on like James and the Giant Peach oh, and wow. uh, like Coraline and stuff, and I got to animate with him for a couple of days, and uh, I took a lot away from him. But uh, uh, there was one time where he was like. Uh, he said he picked up uh, a technique from me, so uh, that was really cool. So you always, like, I think it doesn't matter how much experience you have, there's always a little bit you can get from someone else. Oh, absolutely. It's funny you mentioned James and the Giant Peach, though. We were just talking about that the other day. Definitely one of my favorite um, movies because we have a, we're growing a peach tree in our backyard, so I, I, <laughs> thought, I thought we would name it James, but um, our daughter <laughs> wanted to name it Joey instead, so I guess it's Joey, but... James holds a special place in my heart, though. Oh, yeah. So, Let us know when it gets as big as your house, and we'll come visit it. Awesome. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> we'll send the peach over to get you guys. Yeah, yeah please. <laughs> so besides uh, Paul, um, who have you, and I guess you worked with Forrest on something, maybe. Um, who else have you worked with in person? Uh, let's see. I've, let's see, have I I don't know if I've worked with Sean. I've hung out with Sean while, like while he was animating, but I don't. I haven't like actually worked with him. Uh, let's see, I, I, the first uh, project I collaborated on with uh, all of them is the that, that good dinosaur video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was the first. Uh, that was when I got accepted into the Lego, the secret <laughs> Lego group. I got the invitation. The gold brick invitation. Learn, learn the special handshake and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty tedious. So you've worked on, um, I guess, uh, a stop motion where there's multiple animators. Is that correct? Where yes. So how does that how does that work out when you have more than one animator, or are you you kind of assigned to a certain thing, or um, how does? Yeah, it's it's usually because when like the set is really big and you, you just there's like too much stuff going on that one person can't remember everything so uh like you break it up um to like maybe like one of you takes half the table the other one takes the other half or you just split it up to like different objects and you just have to remember what your object is does anybody like maybe not animate but stand to the side and kind of just check off stuff as everybody's animating like sort of a, a manager or uh well Paul's pretty much the director when mm-hmm. I'm working for him. So he just, you know, anytime I finish a shot, he makes sure that's good before we move on to the next one. Okay, so someone's kind of looking out after, okay, this, this, that, and the other have been moved. All right, everything's good, and take the shot. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's, cool. that's the way it is working with other people. Me, I just, I'm my own boss <laughs> with mini life. Cool. I'm very cool. hard on myself. <laughs> I'm thinking of quitting. <laughs> But I heard you were gonna offer yourself a raise pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, but promising. I don't know if I'm gonna go through with that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe even I mean, working some nice sleep here and there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sleep? What's that? So, uh, Ian, you did you graduate from college with a, a music degree? 
Yeah, I um, I was studying music in Long Beach. I graduated in uh, 2015. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, and uh, since then, yeah, I've just been doing freelance music work uh, around SoCal. I play a lot of uh, jazz groups, orchestral groups, chamber groups uh, around L.A. and Orange County. Uh, I, for the past few months, have been playing at Disneyland. I play in one of the groups there. Wow. Awesome, awesome. That's cool. Yeah, so if you guys visit, you might see him. Yeah, if you look for a tall, funny-looking trumpet player, <laughs> white pants, blue vest. And I'll assume you play other instruments besides the trumpet, but does that sound about right? Uh, uh, yeah, I um, I also I teach privately, and I uh, I teach music classes. Um, I do piano lessons as well. I took a little piano growing up, okay. uh, and I like to play for fun, uh, and I like... Uh, when I got to college, I picked up the ukulele just because it's simple yeah. enough for my simple head to wrap its head around. Uh, and uh, I was happy. There's been a one or two times in the show where um, I've been uh, lucky enough to be featured playing ukulele too. So I, I okay. was really happy to get to do that. Yeah, yeah. like in season four um, when he's in his mayor office and he's uh, doing the mayor song. That's one of my favorite <laughs> ones. Me too. <laughs> Um, but it's it's cool. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, I don't uh, animate or edit like Chris does. I don't really have a, a dog in that race. But the the creative aspect really appeals to me, and it's um, that's kind of where I was intrigued right away when he offered me this chance to kind of uh, explore the silly creative side of it. Um, and I that inspires me kind of musically too. When I see Chris always challenging himself to do something new with. Um, how he puts his uh, episodes out there. And it's like really at the end of the day, I mean, every time he puts an episode out, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a fan too. I see it for the first time. You know, I, I know the script and I've done the lines and stuff, but a lot of the extra effects um, are kind of new to me. And so that I take that and I use that as inspiration for when I go and play too. And did you compose the, the new, um, I guess, uh, Theme song? Uh, semi, yeah. That was Chris, like that was a collaborative effort. Chris came to me. He said he wanted a new theme song, and he had the lyrics down. Um, and at the time, I was playing with uh, a group based in Oxnard uh, called The Gritties, kind of a ska punk sort of thing um, that Chris had seen and liked. Uh, and so I talked to uh, my friend Kevin, who was in charge of that group, and yeah, together we kind of came together. Uh, we came up with the final idea for the song and recorded it with all the members. And that was, I think, the last thing that group ended up doing. <laughs> they ended up, uh, we all went our separate ways shortly thereafter. Um, but and, I'm, I'm really happy with how that came out. Yeah, uh, I love that new music. And did, did they do the outro music, the credits music? Oh, uh, no, that's another really that's cool story. N- another yeah, one. That, that, I love that, that too. Is, yeah, that's my friend uh, Jamie from. Uh, well, I knew her in middle school and 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 then also high school, but uh, yeah, she's she's a really good musician um, in her own right. Um, she plays guitar and stuff. Uh, her name is Jamie Becker. If any of you guys want to look her up, she has like a Facebook page actually. But uh, yeah, she um, she I, I had because because like I was so taken away with our intro song that um i was like oh we, we should have like a cool outro song for the credits too since like we were finally doing credits to give credit to our <laughs> friends um and uh and so I, I thought like since the first since the intro song is so, so nice and big and fun and like it brings you in i thought the outro could be kind of a cool little uh, like simple thing to take you out well, and so i i wrote the lyrics for that and then i just like i called her up and i like i hummed her the melody and she uh she was going to college um in some other state i forget where but she um she was gracious enough to take um her free time and and do that um and uh yeah we worked on that just like i don't know for like a a week or so and then uh, she sent it to me and it was it was good to go. Well, I love the intro and the outro. I guess that's from season four on. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, and 
season one, we, two, and three was was cute and fun, but it definitely stepped up a notch even on the musical uh, stuff. So, um, yeah, I love it. It bookends the uh, your brick films quite well. Yeah, our um, yeah our first three seasons they they were like um, that's back when like Chris and Ian were just doing the show and then occasional um, what is it side like their live plots or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, that stuff was when we were still finding the show and really in the early days, it was just, it was because we didn't really have an audience. It was just me and Ian, uh, making each other laugh. There, there was, <laughs> there was a couple episodes where like, you know, he would start writing one and then he'd send it to me and say like, here, you finish it. Or <laughs> I would do the same thing. And that was always fun to do. And I, I know a lot of our fans, they like, um, they like the way we changed in season four with like a story arc and everything. There's also a lot of fans that like um, the mini life TV show, so um, so I could say after we do the movie, uh, when we start season six, we're gonna be doing kind of uh, like the best of both worlds. We're gonna have we're gonna have episodes that are still our characters' lives, but then there's gonna be other episodes with that is just the mini life TV show. So it's gonna be like sort of both. Well, I look awesome. forward to those. I look forward to those. Um, so that's a big announcement drop. Yeah. Woo, woo. yeah. And you heard, heard it here first. <laughs> Sucked on that internet. <laughs> uh, what frame per seconds do you shoot? Uh, usually uh, 15. 15? Okay. Have you have you experimented with other? Um, uh, I've done 24, you know, a couple times. Or, you know, what what's like the... On the twos or whatever? Yeah, yeah, ones and twos. That's like a term I just learned actually. But yeah, I, I've I've done that a couple times. Uh, I I think it's good for certain sequences, but fifteen is like a good. It's a good base. It's a good place to be. I I prefer that um, too. But uh, James um, Moore and Tommy Williamson are definitely successful uh, shooting uh, twenty four frames um, on the twos. Um, so they, they make it look great. So, you know, but I do prefer yeah. 15. Kevin yeah. too is also very successful. Um, I think Kevin shoots a full blown 24 though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he's just insane. <laughs> yeah, I think, in a, in a I think way. honestly, probably the two, two people that probably work the hardest, it would seem based on as, as much content as you have out would be you and, 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 and Kevin Ulrich. Um, by the way, have you met him? Uh, no, I have not met him yet. Okay, I've heard, I've heard stories, you know, whispers really. Okay. I think <laughs> but, he works. Uh, I know he's out there. He works like seventy hours a week at it, so um, he's he's incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, his stuff's really good. Do you have a particular um, episode or a brick film that you've created? Your um, both of you guys. An episode hey, of Mini Life. A favorite, just something that just stands out. Like I just love that one. Ah, uh, that's it's tough. It's like picking your favorite kid. <laughs> Every parent has one, though. Uh, I can understand. <laughs> uh, I, a lot of my favorites have to do with Snowball. Um, I think I think if I had to pick one, like the one that stands out in my mind right now is the, the Van podcast from season five. Okay. Where, uh, you know, Snowball, he, he goes to the... He goes to the monster... The, the Burton nightclub, and uh, he... Uh, he does that podcast with the different skeletons and zombies and stuff while we're having our little side movie plot of watching uh, Jurassic Parks and Recreation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Parks and Recreation. I liked it when he went to the alternate uh, universe. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that that was that was like I think our f- no that no that wasn't our first two parter. That was our second two parter. But yeah, that, I think that was the first episode where we actually kind of started to uh, mold Snowball into like more, like flesh him out more as mm-hmm. a character, because like he was on his own and he got to sort of he got to see things from his perspective, and I think that's what inspired where he went in season four. Okay. Did you have fun yeah. animating um, with the uh, the play doh or clay or whatever it was when the the I oh, guess the yeah, veterinarian the, turned into a monster. Play, play monster. Yeah, that. <laughs> I like that the was tongue. Really, that, <laughs> oh, sorry, what? The tongue. Yeah. yeah. No, that was fun to do. That 
I I've wanted to work with, with Clay again. <laughs> the monster had some uh, some nice uh, facial uh, expressions. It was cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, his his eyeballs were marbles. <laughs> Little fun <laughs> fact. Um, but yeah, it, that was fun up until the very last day I shot with that monster when he uh, when he spews us out and uh, and to make it to try to make it look like vomit or whatever. I actually made the Play-Doh wet, like I sprayed it with mm-hmm. water and stuff. And I don't know if you've ever felt wet Play-Doh, but I, I don't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> okay. it's, it's very, it feels weird and it smells weird. And yeah, just just say no, kids. Say no <laughs> to wet Play-Doh. So while while you animate, do you listen to um, music or podcasts or TV or anything like that? Uh, like I'm gonna guess no because you have a lot of uh, um, speaking. No, I um, I I can still I can listen to stuff and I mean because w- when you're animating, you know, you, you hear the same line like a hundred times when you're shooting, so you know you you get it the first couple times. Okay. But yeah, I, I usually like to throw on some some music. Like uh, sometimes I make some animation playlists or I just play an album like. Green Day or Arctic Monkeys or something like that. Heck yeah. <laughs> and then I also like to listen to uh, the Nerdist podcast. Or uh, th- there's this one um, I just found recently. It's really great called uh, the uh, animation Nickelodeon Animation Podcast. And uh, it just talks to a bunch of a bunch of uh, creators and voice actors from old '90s Nick. Oh, and, that sounds uh, interesting. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, I I love listening to that, and uh, it's funny because when I like think on, think back on stuff, a lot of the like '90s cartoons that me and Ian grew up with and uh, inspired many live TV a lot, but like I don't think we realized it at, like when we were first starting out. But it's just sort of like you know, it's like embedded in us that kind of weird quirky uh, humor. Okay. Right. Do you have a process for creating your brick film, like storyboard or animatics, um, or you just put a, do a script in and kind of have the storyboard in your head? Mm, I've done a couple storyboards in the past, like when, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, like in season four, all the fight sequences, I had to do um, storyboards for that. But uh, usually, when it comes to like dialogue and stuff, I just kind of go with what's in my head. Okay. But, yeah, usually, so when there's big story arcs, um, the way I map it out is I'll do, like, uh, what's the, I forget what the proper word is, but, like, you know, uh, bubbles of, like, the ideas and, like, arrows pointing to the next thing and the next thing, and then mm-hmm. I flesh that out. Like a comic strip? Uh, no, well, simpler than a comic strip. Really just, like, text that says, um, you know, what's happening mm-hmm. in a bubble, and then, Yeah. But uh, yeah, I do that, and then once that's fleshed out, then you st- I start writing the script, and then when the script's all done, uh, start calling people up for recording, and then uh, when that's all done, it's time to shoot. Excellent, excellent. And do you sort your Lego? And if you do, how do you do? You do it by color or by by piece? How do you how do you sort? Or they just do- all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I guess kind of all over the place. Uh, I mostly I do by color, but I have a couple bins that are like, uh, you know, like small or rare special pieces. It's like, you know, just for like, uh, you know, accessories and fire and things like that that you just need to know where to sometimes. find. Sometimes, yeah. And then I have a couple bins full of minifigs. Okay. Uh, yeah, my. You had some <laughs> cool, cool parts. Really um, I noticed. Did did I see an elephant? At one point, an elephant. It would have been uh, season one, I think. Oh yeah, I think, I think that was the first episode. Yeah. Okay. And I think there was like a uh, a tree trunk that looked really cool. Somewhere along the way, it was just like a one piece tree trunk. Oh yeah, out. I think that was in uh, the mime episode. <laughs> he stumbles around, and falls into it, and pops out with a yeah. big smile. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I've got a lot of, I, mean, I got a lot of 
different things. I've been collecting since I was a kid, so. Yeah, I I, I benefited from a uh, a child that turned into a teenager and wasn't as interested at that point. So I inherited a lot of really cool, uh, mostly Star Wars, but. Yeah, awesome. one one of the the crazy things is I I think the uh, the the freestyle shirt that my my character wore in the first four seasons. I'm pretty sure that is like one of the first, if not the first, um, minifigs I ever got. And at a certain point, did you have to replace Ian's shirt for his character? Because it it got it started looking rough, and then suddenly it was nice again. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's weird. I didn't even notice it until um, until people started pointing it out, and I was like, oh yeah, it used to be a lot more perfect. Yeah, and. So I guess those old like space, um, uh-huh. those old space torsos, they kind of deteriorate more easily than the newer ones. So yeah, I'm gonna have to replace them again for the movie. Probably get a couple, um, just throughout the whole production. And did Still you last longer than my actual shirts? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you draw the uh, sleeves on, or was that something that Lego makes? Yeah, his oh, that's Chris's biggest secret. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his his uh, his sh- his sleeves are drawn on with Sharpie. Okay, and I'm really hoping that Lego will come out with an official black short sleeve because they have like every other color now, but not black. But not black, and and also like you know, no one, no other Lego minifigs were wearing short sleeves before Ian. He was kind of the trendsetter, so. I feel like he's kind of overdue for one. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, do you have any uh, uh, tips or secrets that you could share? Uh, animation tips, or even just just plain old brick combing tips? Uh, let's see, uh, if you study dark magic, you don't have to do anything. You just tell the Legos what to do. <laughs> don't you have to learn to fight first? Uh, well, yeah, I mean that that too. You know? <laughs> But that's a given. Season four joke. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tips. Uh, I don't know. Well, may, I, I might be able to come up with something better if uh, you think of, like, what, what are the kind of struggles that, like, like you, you guys usually see in animation? And maybe I could think of stuff that I struggle with, too. Of course, the Sharpie is a, is a pretty cool that, that's, tip. That's, that's, that's a that's good a, tip. <laughs> no pun oh, intended. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh, uh, do, you, do you use like um, like a putty tack or anything like that? Oh, yeah, sticky tack. Sticky that's tack. Is that like the 3M definitely. stuff, or do you have a different brand? Uh, I don't I don't know what my brand is. I just <laughs> pick it is up. Is it white or blue? or? Cause they call it like blue tack in, I think, England. but it's, uh, it's My stuff is white. So all works too. with this blue. I don't discriminate. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Do you have a little small like tray or anything that you put little tools for assisting your animation? Q-tips or toothpicks? Uh, Nail files. I wish it was that organized. I have a I have an air can. That's about it. Okay, so no, nothing where you just throw everything. Um, they have a good picture in the uh, the Lego animation book uh, by Picano and Pickett of a, a toolbox that I envy. Um, I do have a plethora of uh, Lego uh, removing pieces that are good on hand whenever I'm trying to adjust something. Mm-hmm. I've, I occasionally use it to turn a hand. Usually I'll end up being the toothpick, but occasionally um, I will use the brick separator, but mostly it's just for what it was designed for. So is, is brick filming your full time job? Is this what you're doing all the time now? Mm, no, well, Mini Life, it's like I don't really make any money from Mini Life. I just, I just do it because I like it. You know, it's just a thing. It's a thing that uh, I started sort of just for fun, and then uh, I was it was lucky enough to uh, get me a job working for Paul, and and but I, I still do it. Um, even though I have a job, I still do it just because, you know, I love doing it. Okay. I hope you make a little bit of money from YouTube. Are you partnered with? Oh, yeah. I mean, Federated we make some money every so often, but uh, it's not, it's not yeah, like not little, enough to live on. Yeah, <laughs> we, we know how that goes. You're right. It's good for a couple of cups of coffee. Right. Yeah, there you go. There Unless you go. Which is sort of the most important thing for a Lego land murder, <laughs> right. I think. 
just stick an IV of caffeine in, and then you go. Cool, cool, cool. I hear that. Um, do you have uh, other interests besides brick filming, both of you guys? Well, music for Music for Ian, Ian but that's kind of his job, so I'm sure besides music <laughs> yeah. for Ian. <laughs> you think that y'all do for fun? Let's see. Um, tickling baby animals. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Is your, is your cat named Pockets? Yeah. Okay, so I did a little research. Do so you have a cat? Oh, and a oh yeah, she was she was in an episode. <laughs> we blew her up. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it was in uh, season four. Okay. Have you not got? You didn't get I, to that yet. I haven't got to that. I, I mean, I've I've seen some of the stuff in seven, season seven. I probably saw something. I mean, it's not season seven, but season uh, five. Uh, some of the last few episodes. Um, but I'm, I definitely need to fill in the gaps because I got it kind of, you know, I was doing it for research, but now I'm somewhat addicted, uh, to seeing where all these, uh, plots are going, especially, uh, I, I ha- they, I'm up to the point where they're about to start the tournament in season four. Woo-hoo! So, yeah. and season four, it, 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 it just, t- it really takes off to where it's just, the writing is just goes in, it's, it's really, you know, good, great arcs and, and then the animation and, and all this effects and whatnot are just awesome thanks yeah yeah that was uh that was definitely our first big big leap like i knew it would be something different and i didn't know how well it would be received but uh yeah a lot of people really liked it i'm glad <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm once we're once we're done with this i'll have to uh spend the next two or three hours uh finishing finishing, finishing up because i i, I want to see where things are going where for the ones that i haven't seen yeah, it takes a minute. <laughs> it, it does. I, 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 for some reason, I think, oh, I could watch these in four or five hours, and I think it's about what seven or eight hours worth of stuff, especially if nine it's, hours. How many? Nine hours. Nine. nine. Oh wow. I just barely tallied it up recently. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if we have much else there. Yeah. We're kind of we're over an hour, so we've kind of uh, taken probably more of your time than. <laughs> We thought, but, unless there's uh, anything else that you're wanting to uh, let discuss, people know, or are you are you guys really monkeys? Because there's we, been some debate about that. We are. No. We really. Re- no, we're oh, no, we're not really monkeys. monkeys. Very fluid. Oh, I, uh, yeah. Cheeky monkeys. Cheeky monkeys. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's, I guess there's a difference, you know. Um, David Pagano knows what we look like. Oh, don't you're not supposed to say. Nobody's supposed to know that. Okay, we got to track him. So, down. He, so, <laughs> so he can get a sketch artist, and he'll. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he'll uh, he'll get you a drawing of us. Yeah, we know what we're doing as soon as we hang up. We, we, <laughs> should, have, we should have you guys back on as monkeys, because we have anthropomorphic animals. So yeah, actually, we, you've right done in. a couple of uh, things where you wear your monkey, um, you know, mask. Uh, <laughs> and you, yeah, and I, got, got I, I did a shot collar, a dog shot collar. It was collar. a shot collar test. <laughs> you know, we don't do anything to our kids or our animals unless we've tried it first. So. And it hurt. <laughs> but I shocked myself for a lot longer than the, the dog would get shocked if it gets too close to the fence. But uh, she knows better. Oh, now she's moving. She's mad. And we do eat bananas. And no, we don't throw poop. Not usually anyway. But just Well, you guys are missing out. Yeah. Talk about, you, you, you asked us about our that. hobbies. That's pretty much how we spend most of our time not brick filming. Yeah. <laughs> Tickling baby animals, and then if they don't want us to tickle them, that's when we fling our poop. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, they probably have, like, gotten you first, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. We, we have some experience. Cool, so cool. do we. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, totally appreciate you guys taking all this time to chat with us. You're a lot of fun and love your work and, you know, hope that you get many more subscribers and lots of success. Well, hopefully, some big Hollywood executive uh, will will uh, see it, and um, you'll get a break. Like, uh, was it uh, J.G. Quinton or whatever his name is? Quintel. Right? Quintel that mm-hmm. does um, a regular show. Uh, I think. Oh he, yeah. He, right. uh, if I'm not incorrect, he's when he was a kid, he did some Lego animation. You know, not nearly anything special. I think um, he went to, I think, film school at a certain point, and then uh, worked. Uh, Lego um, Clone Wars or something, then they 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 discovered him. So you maybe this mo- maybe this movie uh, will will get you guys discovered, and um, uh, you'll expand your talents um, 
other places if you want. Or maybe the podcast, because, you know, so many important people listen to this, you just never know. <laughs> yeah, just, right. just remember us little guys when, the, when you get there, you know? Well, we, we really um, appreciate being on, you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I've listened to uh, to um, the podcast before, a lot of other, you know, animators. Some of them I know, some of them I don't know, but it's it's cool to hear other people's, uh, you know, uh, perspective on animation because every, what I've learned from meeting a bunch of different animators is everyone's a little different. Everyone's definitely yeah. different, but, and everyone's yeah, but they all have their interesting way. stories, you know, so it's always neat to hear how everybody does things and, um you know, I, I, the reason we ask about, like, what you use and stuff, it's funny, you know, people, even, like, on, on videos, you probably say, oh, what, what, you know, what software do you use and what disc do you use? And David Pagano just worded it perfect. It's like, it's like, well, you really don't want to know what I use. You want to know what you should use. Yeah, <laughs> and it's right. true, you know. But still, I mean, it's good to know, to hear what, what people started with, that you really can do animation with anything. The cheapest thing. You don't have to have a lot of money or the most expensive equipment. It's really just about, you know, having the time and the um, patience. Patience. Yeah. And, yeah, I think I the think these days the best really. thing to recommend for anyone that asks is just to get um, uh, David Pickett's and Pagano's new book, the Lego Animation Book. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a brilliant. It's so helpful. Um, Once again, folks, that's the Lego <laughs> Animation Book <laughs> available on Amazon.com. And what I always tell people is, really, you just got to have fun because if you're not enjoying it, it it's going to come across that way. But if you're having fun, that's really all that matters. And then people are going to see that, and it's just like, oh, this is cool, you know. Be creative. Yeah, Be creative. Definitely. Yeah, because Lego is all about just you know play, and uh, you, you you shouldn't you shouldn't worry too much about how perfect something is. Just you know, you should just have fun with it. I think that's what you should do with, just with you know pretty much everything in life, actually. But but uh. Sp- it's more with Lego animation. They shouldn't be taken too seriously, I think. Agreed. And you got to know. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> so say again, that's kind of the energy that drew me to this was Chris didn't come off like he was trying to make some, you know, magnum opus and change the world. He just wanted to do what was fun for him and, you know, creatively fulfilling. And um, so, yeah, I'm all about the same thing. And then you have fun, be patient, and trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> have fun, get cool. things done. And the older you get, the more you realize, you know, you're never going to make everybody happy. Never, no matter what you do. So as long as you're just enjoying yourself, then that, that's really all that all that matters. Yeah. I mean, make friends where you can, and when you can't, you fling your poo with them. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any yeah, poo? I love it. Fling it. I was just it. watching a, uh, um, an interview with uh, the – front man for the band Arcade Fire, which is one of my favorite groups, and he was talking about when he spoke with David Bowie when he was alive, and David Bowie said, my only career uh, regrets was when I did what the audience wanted, or when I listened to them, which kind of struck me. It was, I, I don't know. Yeah. You, you got to do it for you. You do, definitely, and it's sad. I still can't believe he's gone, so uh, heartbreak. Yeah, he, he was one of my, my favorites. Mine I listened to him a lot. I, I've been a huge fan for a very very long time so what, well, i mean 29 not years? i was gonna say not very it's not like i'm that old or anything but you know <laughs> okay. thanks again thank Wishing you again. guys a great rest of the you day and looking rock. forward to everything you do yeah cool. thank you guys very Hope much you guys had a nice fourth of july thanks so much to chris and ian for being so generous with their time and thanks to everyone who stuck with us through this entire podcast Please check out our sponsors and partners on the Brick Filmers Guild homepage, and don't forget to check out Mini Life TV's amazing Brick Films on their YouTube channel. If you would like to sponsor one of our podcasts, please contact me through one of our social media sites. We'd also like to thank Kevin McLeod for his wonderful music, which we use for our podcasts and in our Brick Films. Also, if you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, please rate and comment. We'd really appreciate that. So, until next time, bye, y'all!